Good morning, bright and early, seven o'clock here. Sun came up, uh, the sun came up in a nice red sunrise this morning. I've been planting small seeds the last few days and I was going to, I started to edit the video last night and the quality was terrible. So I'm gonna walk around and show you what I did talk about what I did and I might be able to add some of the uh, video from the other recording in with it we'll see there along the front fence I dug out the sod again I done some of it last year and this year I might have it quite completed now I got right back to the fence there but I plant peas along here I just plant the peas directly uh, two to three inches apart. I don't thin them. They grow up a single vine and then they make a wall of green all the way along the fence if I don't thin them. There's a lot of plants outside here. You see some of the bulbs that I have. I will have removed some bulbs inadvertently. Let's see how good a picture I can get of that flower from inside. When I was removing the sod, then I removed some of the bulbs. I had four types of uh, pea seed. One of them was an inedible pod, and I decided that growing peas, why have an inedible pod if you uh, don't have to? Here I have sugar snap. I was out yesterday to get a load of wood and I had some struggles with the tree and wore myself out so today there's not going to be a load of wood gotten, maybe tomorrow. In the center portion I have uh, Oregon Sugar 2, that's a snow pea. And last year I had put the onion bulbs along here. And I missed a few. Quite a few actually. And when I was cleaning out the sod I said I'll leave those there and I'll have alien flowers growing up among. So there will be a bunch of other flowers that I'm going to going to be planting along here. <coughs> That's the rose bush. <coughs> Coming along the third section, it's the longest, but also the least uh, fertile. Basically, what is fertile here is what I've layered on top. And what you see here now is a new layer of uh, compost that I just put down. I'll have to finish it outside. But I have super sugar snap here, which I guess is an improvement on sugar snap. And that is a regular edible pod pea as well. I planted carrots. Here and here. I recorded it, but the, both the video and audio was terrible. So, I do have a project coming up where I have to put a bunch of stuff in one bed and I'll talk about how I plant them in that. Right here, I'll zoom in. That's the person up that I set specifically to go to seed this year. And the second one looks like it's not going to grow. It seemed to be putting out roots further down when I healed the uh, compost around it, but mm, there's nothing coming yet. However, this is one that I missed last year, so I'm going to let that one grow.
it's growing up in the second bed of carrots. See the first one is over there, and then this one is down right here. And then I planted out beets because the beet starts that I have inside. They're around every day. But as I was saying before I got distracted, uh, the beet uh, starts that I have inside are just their seed leaves yet and they don't have their first early leaves. So I planted seed here, uh, beet seed, uh, the sugar beet, eight inches apart, in the rows eight inches apart. and. The seed, I attempted to put them two inches apart, and as they come up, I will harvest every second beet until I get to the recommended six to eight inches spacing between each plant. Uh, sugar beet, they grow very large, they can be three to five pounds and one foot long. Now with regular beets, you can actually still see the spacing on the uh, drills that I have here. And I can talk about this because really they only need to be uh, 3 inches apart or 4 inches apart in the row, which technically you can say, well, I could put the rows closer together because it's just a uh, home garden. But the thing is, when you're weeding, this is your equipment, your hands. Um, I spaced the rows far enough apart that if I'm going to come in and weed, I can easily weed out halfway between the rows a clear path and then weed in toward the each row and be safe in not uh, disturbing my actual crops. That's the bed with the uh, thermometer in it and there's my second bed of beets. <coughs> in this bed I put uh, the mustard this year you remember last year I had mustard and beans up here and I just had two row, rows down the length of the bed of mustard. This year I checked online to make sure I would have the right spacing and everything and I put rows across. So this will be a, quite a thick mat of greenery once everything is growing. Mustard is another one that you can plant fairly thickly because the stuff you grow to seed is the same as the uh, ones that you grow for greens. You just let it grow. It's an annual plant and it will go to seed in that one year. So I just sprinkled them along exactly like I would the rutabaga and I will thin once again, every second one out for greens until I get to the proper spacing for to grow the plants to full size. And these two beds, so we're over in the 
shady plot now, you see. Well, this corner of the bed, it doesn't get much shade. It gets as soon as sun comes up. It's cloudy now, that's why it's dull. <coughs> it gets sun first thing in the morning and pretty much the last thing in the evening because the sun sets actually over, well, in the summer it'll set down behind these trees and then it drifts down this way. That's pretty much straight west there. Turnip seed, uh, you plant the rows eight inches apart because it's rutabaga actually, not turnip. In the rows they need to be six inches apart, they get quite large. But you can harvest every second plant for greens until you get to the right spacing. That was the small seed, it's just a little note now on the onions, and this is the brown that you see. It happened last year too. Uh, pretty much every one of these onions for Alyssa Craig and Red Weathersfield, it looks like I'm going to lose a couple of Red Weathersfield, uh, they will grow. And then the Australian brown, uh, looks like all the Australian brown are going to come as well. When you put them out, the, a lot of the first leaves, they will die. And I don't know if hardening them off uh, better helps or no. But these were in the thicker star foam cases. And then you go over to the next bed, and the reason why the thicker ones is in one bed and the thinner ones is in the other ones, just because I uh, planted the plants that were doing best first. So over here, I am going to lose some of these. But there is a greater percentage of them are coming. So I think uh, later on, Come middle of June, you'll see the onions growing fairly well here. This one here, conserva shallots, that was in a very shallow, uh, it was only like a half an inch or something thick uh, styrofoam tray. And I'm going to lose quite a few of those. That's as far as I got with the small seed right now. I don't really have a lot left. Uh, most of it's transplants. Um, and I have those flower seeds. So I'm going to plant the potatoes today. I really have to decide where. So I'll go inside and get them. And we'll find out. Here's my uh, potato sets. Kennebec. I have 36 sets. They are an indeterminate potato, and for that uh, potato tower ideal, you need indeterminate potatoes. I put 30 sets in a bed, so I'm going to keep the other 6 sets and try that uh, potato tower ideal, and of course I will report and see how it works for, for me here in Newfoundland. These are Norland Red. I have 50 sets, so I will put 25 in a bed and make two beds worth out of it. These are Russet Gold Rush. As far as the Russets, I don't know which is which, so this is really a, an adventure to find out what russets taste like what and their texture. Um, but 61 sets, I will uh, make two beds out of it. And I have 56 sets of Yukon Gold. Yukon Gold is a must. Now, these three, the Northern Reds, the Russet Gold Rush, and the Yukon Gold, they're determinate potatoes. They set all their potatoes at one level in the one bunch. Um, 
my understanding is the indeterminate potatoes can act somewhat like the indeterminate uh, tomatoes and if you keep mulching or healing them up they can produce more potatoes along their stem and hence the reason for the potato tower idea. The northern red I'm going to put in these two beds. I've put potatoes in these beds the last two years. The reason I'm putting potatoes in the beds year after year is I'm building up these. This was also the, just like down by the uh, south wall of the house. I put cardboard down the bottom here and I layered it up with mulch and kelp and whatnot. Um, the fertility is getting better. I had better results with this last year than I did the year before. But uh, the stuff that grows here is not kept down by cardboard. I suppose if you were lived in a city, uh, should I say, if you lived somewhere where you had a lawn planted out with the normal golf green monoculture grass, that the cardboard thing would work. But when you've got a meadow of every wild plant in the neighborhood growing, it doesn't work for me. <laughs> I have to build up a layer of soft earth that I can easily take weeds out of I mean, stinging nettles and the uh, really pernicious grasses and I mean these weeds fly in and the seed flies in and they take hold you turn your back for two minutes and there's a plant growing. So I'm going to lay out the potatoes now. I try to do straight across the bed, but really potatoes is one of those good ones that you can do uh, easily with the uh, square foot gardening method. They need to be a foot apart. So you just lay them down three across the bed. Since this bed got a corner on it, I need to lay this one out here. Now let's count how many I put there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. That's because of the little bit off the bed on that side. I put 33 in that bed. I have to record that. Now you can see how they're all laid out here. Approximately a foot apart. And I'll just show you what I do next. Depending on what you plant them in, um, you might need something to dig with. Of course, I got my claws here, uh, but if you're planting them in just uh, really light material or mulch, then you'll just be able to move the side with your hands anyway. Almost as if I'm planting a flower above shallow. 
down about four inches. About three to four inches. some weeding while I'm at it. See the mulch and compost stuff is getting fairly thick here now, so I can uh, pull up a lot of the weeds fairly easy. And that's very easy to dig uh, come fall and uh, get up all the potatoes as well. So I'll just continue on and plant the, the rest of these now, just as I showed you there. Uh, put them down in the ground. And then we'll move to the next set of potatoes. I've laid out the rest, uh, so it was the russet gold rush on the first two beds. It's the uh, red Norland on these two beds, one here and one here, and this is the Kennebec. Now there's so many weeds in this, not because I was too lazy to take them all out, but this bed and this bed are my last two beds that need some real serious amending and attention to. So uh, growing potatoes in them for the first couple of years is the best way to get your soil amended because I will mulch these now and when I dig them all that mulch will be turned down into the uh, soil. And then I have all my Yukon Golds laid out here. And I skipped a little space and leave them all out. So I'll put these down now to soil level. The soil is really fertile here. Right there was my first compost bins. I had two compost bins there. One year I got a uh, planted pumpkin beside it and got 26 pound pumpkin out of a variety that's supposed to grow to 22 pounds. And the rest of the length was the raspberry patch. But the raspberry patch had overgrown with uh, stinging nettles and so I put the chicken tractor in over it and let them tear everything up and I just destroyed, well attempted to <laughs> destroy all the vegetation that was there and then I mulched it with uh, wood chips and several other things. I think there was cardboard put down here as well. I'm not sure. Now they're all planted and I have a couple of notes of interest. If you remember last year, this bed I had planted out with uh, arugula and that bed I had planted out with lettuce and yeah, that's way too much lettuce and arugula. So it had grown up, well overgrown and bolted. I let it go to seed. I said I'll have arugula weed here next year. And sure enough, here it is coming up all over the bed. I've turned some of it in now with uh, burying the, setting the potatoes. But I'm going to have arugula growing among my potatoes. And I'll just keep it down low so that it doesn't overtop the potatoes and regularly harvest it. 
and if it gets out of hand I'll just pull it up for weeds. I haven't noticed any uh, lettuce coming up here yet but it'll prob probably come. And when I get my Yukon Golds planted, this is what they're planted in, you see. So now it's fluffed up somewhat. You can see somewhat of what I planted them. They're down touching the soil underneath, and this is what's on top of them. That's what I've planted so far as of, uh, what is it, uh, May the 29th now. I'll probably, what I hope to do is make some short videos um, every day or every time I get uh, something of interest done and put them up, whether that's every day or what. I don't make promises, remember. But I hope you enjoyed the video or found it interesting. If you did, please hit the thumbs up for me. And I'll see you in the next one.